Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts Variety Crafts in my pajamas. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for stopping by again and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoy this compilation that I made for you guys. It's all kitchen DIYs. A bunch of them are Dollar Tree. Some of them are made using the Cricut. If I do use the Cricut, I will leave the SVG files linked in the description so that you can use those too if you have a Cricut. And if not, they're all super easy to do with regular stencils so I hope you enjoy these DIYs if you do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIYs like these don't forget I do have all of my social media linked down in the description including my Instagram and a Facebook page where you can share all of your beautiful creations I love to see what you guys are working on so without further ado let's jump right into these DIYs So for this first DIY, I have this sign from Dollar Tree. I picked this up a couple years ago. I had it for a long time, probably over a year before I even figured out what the heck I was going to do with it, but I did get some inspiration from Pinterest and eventually figured out what I wanted to do. So I just went ahead and sanded down the place where that sticker was and I just decided to cover the whole entire thing with some white Waverly chalk paint. Now I am using some Cricut stencils that I made with some contact paper. If you don't have a Cricut, that's okay. There's so many ways that you can add lettering and pictures to your signs that does not require a Cricut. You can use regular stencils. You can transfer it with pencil. You can use um, that, uh, what is that, transfer paper, the carbon stuff. I don't know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. There's so many different ways that you can recreate these lick looks without a Cricut. So my technique for stenciling is just to use a flat sponge brush and I stipple on the paint, which basically means that you're bouncing the brush up and down with just a little bit of paint on it. If you don't stroke the brush on it, you're going to have a much better outcome without bleeding or anything. So once everything is dry, just go ahead and remove that contact paper and weed everything out with my little Cricut tool. Now I know some of you have been having trouble getting my SVG files that you wanted to use with your Cricut and I promise I'm working on it. I'm not really sure how all of this stuff works. I just share the link and for some reason it's going to a page that you can't open. So I'm not sure why exactly it is doing that but I will try to do a little bit more research and figure out what's going on. Until then I will try to label them and put easy keywords that you can search um, to make sure that you're able to just search them on Cricut and still find them. I just make them public for you to find. So I did go ahead and add those lines with some Posca paint pens and then I went ahead and distressed a little bit with my truffle chalk paint and I absolutely love how this thing came out. I think it is super adorable and I really didn't have very high hopes for that sign when I picked it up. I wasn't even sure if I was going to get it and I'm super glad I did because I absolutely love how it turned out. For these next DIYs, I also used some little boxes from Dollar Tree. All I did was use some scissors to remove those little hangers on the back. You could fill in the little holes with some spackling or hot glue or something. They didn't bother me, so I just left them as is, but you can definitely fill those in if you want to. Next, I just covered the whole entire thing with white Waverly chalk paint, and then I used my stencils from contact paper with my Cricut. I, all I did was search for the animal that I wanted to put on there and then I just wrote the words underneath. Super simple design. 
um, but like I said, I will try to link those below. Now I am using contact paper for these stencils. It's super easy and very, very inexpensive. I used to use the Dollar Tree contact paper is what I'm using here, but I had a lot of issues with um, it leaving a sticky residue on my project and I absolutely hate that because who wants that on their project after you spent so much time on it and then just a bunch of dirt and dust and hairs are sticking to it. It ain't cute. So anyway, I switched over to Walmart contact paper and it works perfectly. It never leaves a sticky residue. I just use a colored one for um, my stencils so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I will use the clear contact paper as a transfer tape. So it works out perfectly. I use the duck brand. I will leave that linked in the description as well because a lot of you have been asking me for the link of this specific one that I use, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just using the duck brand, um, but there's no like specific one that I use. I just use whatever is there when I go shopping. <laughs> Also, it's only around five or six bucks and it comes with a ton on the roll, which lasts me forever. So I think it's also a better value than Dollar Tree as well. So I just basically did the exact same thing on these that I did on the first one, just black and white and then a little bit of distressing with my truffle Waverly chalk paint. I tried to get in the corners and edges as best I could so it looked really realistic and natural where the distressing would usually be and I think these are so adorable I don't really have a tiered tray that I use in my home I don't have a ton of extra surfaces where I can set things but I love to hang things on the wall in my little galvanized um, I don't even know what it's called it has these little cubbies in it and these things are so cute in there so you could use these on a tear tray or you know on a shelf on the wall or something like that and I think it would be really really pretty but perfect for the kitchen. Now before we jump into the next DIY, I wanted to give a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and tons more. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, it's the perfect learning environment with no ads to break your focus, and they are always launching new premium classes to help you learn new skills and stay creative. Members get unlimited access to thousands of classes with video lessons, hands-on projects, and feedback from a community of millions. I really enjoyed Mary Kate McDevitt's class on hand lettering essentials for beginners. Just within the first few segments, she gives practical ideas on how to come up with interesting designs as well as detailed information on different types of pens, pencils, and other tools you might need for different effects. I highly recommend her class. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership membership so you can explore your creativity too. Now let's jump back into those DIY. So for this next DIY, I actually got this giant wooden butter knife in a Michael's grab bag a long time ago. So the whole box, which was filled with tons of really good stuff that time, they're kind of hit or miss for me, um, but that one was like tons of good stuff four dollars for the box and this had a tag on it of originally fifteen dollars um that's a little pricey in my opinion but whatever still a good value for what i paid for it anyway and then my favorite way to age wood these days is to mix a little bit of paint with water so depending on what color I'm, or tone or whatever that I'm kind of going for is what paint I will choose. So for this one, I just used some gray chalk paint mixed with water and 
it made this beautiful stain that made it look really weathered and old and I just really love that and then I decided to kind of whitewash it a little bit with some white Waverly chalk paint so I just did some light strokes at first you know just a little bit and the lighter and lighter towards the edges and then I asked you guys in a community post this was a long time ago I asked you guys for ideas for what I should write on it for the sign and I eventually landed on spread the love I thought that was so cute there were so many great ideas you guys are so clever I could never think of all of these on my own but spread the love I thought was really cute so that is what I landed on and I just used a Posca paint pen in a Walmart stencil to write these out super simple and easy and I think it gives it a nice farmhouse look and then to finish this one off I just went ahead and wrapped some twine around the edge and made a little twine bow and added that and I think it turned out so adorable this is still one of my favorite ever kitchen DIYs and I forgot to mention that of course I did go ahead and distress the words as well because I cannot do any project without distressing it So for the next few DIYs, we have a similar look to the first ones in that we are just using black and white and a little bit of distressing with that truffle color. I made some more stencils with my Cricut and for these I'm just using some scrap wood. For the first one here, this was a piece of scrap wood that was my grandpa's. I was really excited when I found this when we were going through the things at their house before we sold it. and. It was just, like I said, a piece of scrap wood that he was using to actually hold up some antiques off the top of the cupboard so that you could see them better. But I really liked how it was almost kind of like shiplap or like a little palette. Um, so I took advantage of that and just painted the top pieces and left the pieces between um, kind of just that natural wood color and then I just wrote farm fresh eggs and I made a little egg stencil as well and I really love how this one turned out it's sitting in my dining room up on my little galvanized shelf and I absolutely love how it looks up there with the other antiques that I have from my grandparents For the next sign, this is just a tiny piece of scrap wood that I had on hand and I just wrote the word yum with a period after it and stenciled it right on there. It's super simple and I have this sitting on my coffee bar. You could use this in a tiered tray on your kitchen counter, wherever and I think it would be super adorable. Now for this next one, this is one of my favorites, but like I said, back then I was using the Dollar Tree contact paper and it left a lot of sticky residue on this specific sign. So it is covered in dust and hairs and it's just super disappointing. So don't make the same mistake that I made. Just use Walmart. It's cheaper in the long run and it's just the quality is much better. So I just made a little design on my Cricut and cut it out with my contact paper stencil. I thought this was perfect for summer kitchen decor. This would be so cute on a tear tray or even like a Sunday bar. I just think it is so cute and I love ice cream decor for the summer, but I don't really like lots of bright colors. I'm pretty neutral when it comes to decor in my house and so I absolutely love the way that this one turned out but like I said it is kind of ruined by all of the sticky stuff that was left on it I couldn't find a way to get it off if any of you know of a way let me know down in the comments um, but other than that I would say just don't make the same mistake that I made 
So of course, just distressing some more with that truffle color. I try to get all of the high points and then down in the corners and edges of the sign where dust or dirt would naturally accumulate. Accumulate. Um, it's getting late, people. Like to make it look as natural as possible with the distressing. So for this next DIY, I have these little round pieces from Dollar Tree. They came with like some hanging wire on the back and I just went ahead and removed that. I just went ahead and removed those stickers with my hair dryer. Hot tip for the mamas of newborns, if your baby is scared of the hair dryer or you don't want to wake them up when they're sleeping, I used to hold these above <laughs> the stove. It's probably not a good tip, but... um. The heat from the burner, you just need to hold it there for a second, like above. Don't burn yourself. But um, I honestly have burned myself more times with the hair dryer than using the stove. So I just hold it above for a few seconds, and that's all it takes. And you can peel that right off of there. So once I had removed all of the stickers, I just went ahead and painted the edges of these signs with some of my Truffle Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to use some paper on these so I didn't paint the whole surface, just the edges that were showing that bright white. Next, I had some paper that was given to me as a gift. I believe it was from Oriental Trading Company, but it just looked kind of vintage to me. So I went ahead and used that. I'm sure you could find some at Hobby Lobby or on Amazon easily. Um, and then I just had some free printables and I will see if I can find those. Um, but for some reason, I could not move the printable to where I wanted it in, on the paper, so I couldn't fit it in the center of my circle. Um, so I decided to go ahead and just cover the whole thing first with the plain part of the paper, and then I cut out my little printables. Now these are herbs that I found on Pinterest, so I will go ahead and link those in the description if they're still available. and. Like I said, I just printed those out. I wasn't able to change the size or the placement on the paper, and that might have just been like something that was going on with my computer. I'm not quite sure. This was a long time ago when I tried to do it, um, but I kind of liked the way that it turned out because I was originally just going to put them right onto the circles, but instead I had to cut them out, and then I decided to tear around the edges to make them look a little bit more aged. And then I just crumpled up all of the paper to make it look old and wrinkly. And then I just used some spray adhesive and put these right onto the circles. And then once I had everything laid out the way that I wanted it, I went ahead and used some more of that truffle chalk paint to distress everything, especially going around the edges of those printables. And I think it turned out really, really cute. Next, I had this basket from Dollar Tree. I liked the golden color that it was with this paper, but I wanted to make it look a little bit aged and rusty. So I used some more of that truffle chalk paint. This is really my go-to for distressing almost everything. Thing. I just used an old brush that I had on hand where the bristles were kind of garbage and I just just kind of stippled that all over the basket. That way it kind of makes that rusty look. Next, I hung those circles right in my basket. I really love how this turned out. It's really rustic but also kind of boho and I think it would be perfect in your kitchen. It's still a favorite of mine. 
so moving on to the next DIY, I made this kitchen towel with these towels from Walmart. It comes in a pack of three, and I believe they're about seven or eight dollars, which is not really that bad for three towels of this great quality. And they already have that red ticking stripe, which I think is really pretty. I think that's what it's called. It's very rustic farmhouse country look, which I love. And then I just have this design that I cut out from my Cricut. And then I believe I did use some fabric paint on this. I've used regular paint as well. It just depends what you're going to use it for. But the fabric paint is a little bit softer and bends easily with your towel. And I really like the way that it came out on this towel. So for this next project, I had another big piece of scrap wood that was my grandpa's. He used this in his shop and had a bunch of cans sitting all over it and I just absolutely loved the rings on it and the old distressed look that it already had. So my mom wanted me to make a sign for her on this piece of wood since it was her dad's. She's putting this down in their basement over a buffet table where they eat sometimes. So she chose this Bible verse and I think it's perfect for kitchen decor. It says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And I just printed this out with a very simple font. I think it's perfect for this sign. You're still able to see a lot of the original wood. It still has those rings up at the top, which is a really nice reminder every time you look at it and see those rings it just reminds you of my grandpa and I absolutely love that. Now this next DIY is not specific to the kitchen, but I think it would be so pretty in a kitchen. So I decided to add it to this video. Um, and what I did was I just used some old scrap pieces of wood that were also my grandpa's. I thought they were perfectly aged already. And I just went ahead and nailed a piece of scrap wood to the back of those to hold them all together. Now they weren't all exactly the same width. So I did have to put a little piece of wood underneath to hold it up while I was nailing it in. Now I had these hooks that I wanted to add to this, um, but I didn't have enough for each square. So I just used two of these and then I went ahead and grabbed some other hooks that I had on hand. Since the hooks were not matching, I just went ahead and added a little bit of spray paint to them and then I pulled some of it off before it was completely dry and it gave it a really nice rustic look. My only mistake was that I screwed them in before they were completely dry and that pulled off almost all of the rest of the paint so then I had to add a little bit more at the end because they were almost completely back to the shiny way that they were before. Next, I took some of these wee yogurt jars that Zach's mom saves for me and just gave them a nice coat of this spray paint. It has a chalky finish, which I absolutely love. It's so easy to use on jars, but they still look nice and farmhouse and kind of rustic. And then of course, I'm using that same truffle chalk paint to distress these. Then of course, I did go in with some sandpaper to kind of tone down those harsh contrasting colors. It's kind of a subtle difference, but it makes a big difference to me because I think it just looks so much more naturally distressed. Next I decided to add some jute hangers to these so I just hot glued four pieces around the edges and then wrapped some twine all the way around until I was happy with the look and then I made sure no little tails were peeking out the bottom and just cut those off if I had any extra. And then once I was finished wrapping, I just hot glued the end. Then I just tied a knot at the top and popped in some reindeer moss as fillers in these. And then I grabbed some picks that I had from Walmart and tore them apart so I had enough to put in each of the jars. And then I hung them on the hooks that I made and I think it turned out so, so pretty. This is actually hanging in our dining room, but I think it would be so pretty in a kitchen as well.
for the next DIY, I have this plunger from Dollar Tree, and I will let you guys know right at the beginning of this video that you do not need a Dollar Tree plunger to make this project. In fact, it would be much easier and more cost effective if you just grab the thick dowels from Walmart. They come three in a pack. They're almost the same length. They're t a tiny bit shorter, um, but they are close to the same length and way less work. You don't have to try to peel off that sticker and you don't have to cut off the grooves at the end, but this is what I had on hand. So this is what I used and I found those later. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Now I did try to sand off the sticky part of this and I'm sure I could wash it off with something but for video purposes I just turned it around to the back. Next I had these tiny little jars that Zach's mom found on Amazon and she always saves me the cutest things so I really appreciate that. But I just went ahead and tied some jute twine to the edges of the bottle. I did this one before the other one actually in real life and so I would suggest just doing it the same way that I did the last ones unless you want to do like a macrame hanger or something like that would be super cute as well um, but that would be the easiest way other than that I would think um, but then I just popped some little florals in there that I had from Michaels I grabbed some spring florals earlier this year and I pulled a few pieces off and I think it's just so cute and dainty and would be perfect for the kitchen Next DIY is from one of my earlier videos on this channel and I just had this sign from Dollar Tree. I apparently sanded off all the glitter on one side but I never could quite get all of the glitter off of these signs so I just always use the back of them but you can go ahead and use the front if you want. If the back being that color or whatever bothers you you could always cover it with some craft paper or paint over it but to me it's no big deal no one's gonna see it because it is the back so I just painted all over this sign I believe that was the plaster color chalk paint it could have been ivory um, and then I just used a Posca paint pen and a Walmart stencil. Posca paint pens are my favorite. I will leave them linked in the description. They're kind of pricey. I don't have an affiliate link or anything. I should by now as much as I promote them. Um, but they are just my favorite paint pens. They're super good quality. They always write smooth. And I feel like they work the best on the most surfaces. And the main thing that I really love about them as well is that they are matte and most of the other paint markers that I've tried are glossy and I just don't like that look. So I really like these. They come with a medium and fine point as well, but I will leave some linked in the description if you want to check those out. Um, and then, like I said, this was just a Walmart stencil, and I just went ahead and traced out everything. The bigger stencil was from Michaels a really long time ago. I doubt they have that one anymore, but you never know. So next, I just filled in all my letters, and then I took some inspiration from a pin I found on Pinterest that had a simple little coffee cup. I am not an artist by any means, but I figured I could do good enough to make this little coffee cup. So I just kind of traced it out on a piece of paper. Super simple, but I think it really added a lot to the sign. Now to transfer that on, you just color all over the back with a pencil. Then you can cut it out and place it where you want it on your sign and then just go over it really hard with a pen and it'll transfer the ink onto the other side. So it's a little bit hard to see in the video, but you can see it easily in real life. And then I just traced over that with my paint pen again, and I think it turned out really cute. I just went ahead and filled that in with some matte black apple barrel paint, as well as the bigger letters. 
um, just so I wouldn't use up all of my paint pen on those letters. Then I just wanted to make the sign a little bit more detailed, so I went around the edges with the paint pen and added a little bit of a design, and I think it turned out so, so cute, perfect for a coffee bar or your kitchen. And I always forget to mention, I did go ahead and distress it a little bit. I like to use a lighter color on the darker parts and then a dark color on the lighter parts. That way everything looks kind of equally distressed. Um, because if I just used the dark color, then the black part wouldn't look as distressed, if that makes sense. So I used the lighter color on the black letters. For this next DIY, it's kind of boho shabby chic. I used this ivory color chalk paint on this little metal tray from Dollar Tree. I just covered it with a few coats. Next, I just found a leaf I liked on Cricut Design Space and cut that out with some contact paper to make a stencil like I'm doing with most of these projects. Then I used some green chalk paint to fill in this stencil and once it was completely dry, I just used some more of that good old truffle chalk paint to distress this a little bit and to bring out those pretty little details on the edges of the tray. Again, a very simple project, but such a little statement piece. I love it. For this next DIY, I thought these would be perfect to sit in a windowsill or something if you have that looking out of your kitchen or even just on the counter or a tiered tray. But I have these little jars from Dollar Tree. I just went ahead and painted all of them with a few coats of the white Waverly chalk paint. I really liked the little design on these jars and I thought it would be perfect for distressing. So that's all I did is paint them white and then distress them a little bit with some more of that truffle paint and added a little bit of twine around the top with a bow and that's all I did for these. I just threw in some Dollar Tree succulents and I think they came out so, so cute. I just think they would be so perfect for a kitchen. Now this next DIY involves a little bit of macrame. Don't be scared. This is my first time ever trying it and it didn't come out perfect, but I think it is so cute anyway. So I just have some more of those little jars that I painted with the Dollar Tree succulents and I just decided to go ahead and make some little hangers for them. So I used some jute twine and I am not going to be very great at explaining this but it's pretty simple to watch. I know my background is not perfect for um, being able to see the brown jute on top of this brown paper and I apologize for that and I promise you guys I am making steps um, towards getting a better place to film. These are old DIYs and I've been filming on my basement floor lately in my most recent DIYs, but I'm working on getting a table and at least some white poster board or something down so you guys can see a little bit better. But anyway, I just went ahead and looped it over and tied a knot at the top. Then I'm just tying the two strings next to each other. I tried to make all of the knots about the same spot with each set. Then once I have all four knots, I'm taking one strand from each side and tying those strings together. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And then after I had that finished, I just went ahead and tied a knot at the bottom. So this is extremely simple. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm sure there are much better tutorials for macrame out there, but this is just something really simple that I did and I absolutely love how it turned out. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch the rest of the process because I feel like me explaining it is not exactly going to help you anyway. But I absolutely love how these turn out and I think they would be perfect to hang in your kitchen.
Now this is one of my earliest videos, so Brie is still tiny in this video. I can't believe it. Back when she used to jump in her little jumper next to me while I was filming, and now she is running around the house and talking and it's just crazy how fast they grow. Anyway, I found these milk bottles at Dollar Tree and I just did a really nice thick coat of the ivory chalk paint on these and I made sure to get into every crack because I was going to go back with some wet paper towel and do a little bit of wet distressing on here. This was my first time wet distressing. I know there's a few different techniques, but I just used the wet paper towel and that seemed to work just fine. I really liked the way that it kind of chipped off. Some of them were bigger pieces and it just looked really cool to me. So that's what I did for these. Once I was all done distressing, I just took some jute twine and wrapped it around the top to make a little hanger. Then I had this little wooden box shelf thing that I had made with some old scrap wood that I had on hand and some chicken wire and I just drilled some holes in the top and then I slipped that twine through the top and tied a knot. And that's how I hung these little jars in here and then I threw in some florals that I had from Hobby Lobby and I just really love how this turned out. It's still one of my favorite DIYs I've ever done and I sold it pretty much immediately when I posted it on Facebook and I just think it would be so cute in your kitchen. Next I have some jars that I painted and distressed and just put a few different designs and words on. I always think jars and bottles are so cute for kitchen decor so that's why I added these into this video but I just went over the whole entire thing with some white Waverly chalk paint. You can do this by hand or an easier way is just to use the spray paint like I did with those other jars, but I didn't have that at this time, so I just used um, a paintbrush and did a couple of coats. Then I took this same stencil that I've been using from Walmart and I traced on an N with my pencil and then I made a smaller O at the top to make it look like the farmhouse lettering and the number four. Now I had this jar that I did a long time ago that I kind of was trying to go off of and that's another idea too. You can see how I used like the fabric on it and then put the number on and I think that's a really cool look too but it's obviously extremely distressed which is definitely my style but I know it's not everyone's and I just wanted to do a new version of it so I just used my Posca paint pen over the top of the letters and the number once I had it exactly how I wanted it with my pencil and I just filled that in and then I distressed a little bit and that was all I did for this one I think it turned out really pretty. Next I had this jar that was given to me at Christmas time with some hot chocolate in it and I really liked the shape so I saved it once all the hot chocolate was gone and I basically used the exact same method with this one only I used a little Cricut stencil that I made that said Old Country Farm and some ink Waverly chalk paint and just stippled that onto there and once everything was dry I just distressed this one too and I think it's so so pretty and would be perfect for your kitchen or a little tiered tray or a shelf. So many possibilities with this little guy. I just love it. So this jar is just a Starbucks coffee jar that you buy at the grocery store. That's a little tip if you haven't noticed before. Also salad dressing bottles. Some of them look kind of like milk jars. So if you were never able to find the ones at Dollar Tree, this is a good alternative, something similar. Um, so I just went ahead and used that same method on this one, only instead of adding some words, I just added a little jute twine at the top. I think it's really, really pretty. You could add some flowers to this too, and I think it would just be super cute to have in your kitchen. So for the last idea for bottles and jars, I just had this Coca-Cola bottle that Zach's mom had saved for me, and I just wrapped the entire thing with my jute twine. I like to use the one from Walmart because it's a little bit thicker for wrapping things and it doesn't take as long as Dollar Tree twine. And then since I was wrapping it so closely together, I didn't have to paint it or even remove the label. Once I had everything on here, you weren't going to see any of that underneath. I did use a little bit of hot glue here and there, but I 
did not use it on every line at all, just at the top and the bottom and then a few places in between. Now you can go ahead and use a lighter on this if you want to, to singe those hairs off and make it look more rust rustic too. And I think it just turns out so pretty and looks really nice with the other jars as well. Now this DIY is one of my favorites and one of your favorites as well since it is the most watched video on my channel. Um, but I actually got some inspiration from the piece that I saw at Hobby Lobby that I showed there in the picture and I decided to make it out of Dollar Tree items. So I just went ahead and popped out the back of these. It's super easy to do and you can just pull that piece right off and I removed the stickers as well. Now all of my frames were already painted black so I didn't have to do anything to those because I already liked the way that they looked. After I removed those stickers I just sanded everything down so it would be nice and smooth and then I went ahead and added some plaster Waverly chalk paint onto all three of the backs of my little shadow boxes. Next I used a little bit of brown apple barrel paint to distress these a little bit. I just used an old brush and a paper Paper towel to make sure that I don't have too much on my brush and just dry brushed a little bit of that on there. After that was dry I used my Walmart stencil to write farm fresh eggs and I tried to start in the middle on each one so that I could go outwards to make them more centered but not all your letters are the same exact size for instance an I is a lot thinner than an M so that plan is not always foolproof, but you can just try to account for those thicker letters when you're starting your word. Now, as you can see, the farm part of my sign was not centered as well as I would have liked it, but that's okay because I went ahead and added some things later that made that kind of even out and look really good. So once I had all my letters filled in with my Posca paint pen, I went ahead and used some more of that plaster paint to distress my words a little bit. Next, I used my staple gun to connect my frames together and then I did add a little bit of hot glue on the other side just because my frames were still kind of opening on the other side. You could add more staples to the front if you want it to look more rustic, which I do a lot these days. Um, I wouldn't suggest hot glue by any means um, to hold these together. I just did that for video purposes. If you're going to use glue, I would say wood glue at least. Um, would hold them together really well. Next, I decided to add a little bit of chicken wire to the back of this. This is real chicken wire. I know they have decorative chicken wire in some places. You can find it. Used to be able to find it at Walmart. I don't know if you still can. I never found it there in the first place. Um, but this is real chicken wire and is a, it is a little bit harder to work with and it's very pokey. I get cut almost every time I use this stuff, so just be sure to be careful if you do use it. Once everything was stapled down, I just set my signs on top of the chicken wire and folded the chicken wire in around it to hold it in place. You could add glue or more staples, but this worked perfectly for me. I did go ahead and cover those pointy edges with hot glue so that they wouldn't be pokey anymore and cut anyone. But then my friend did end up wanting this one, so I just covered the whole back with some self-adhesive felt from Arteza and that worked really well. It made the back of it look a lot nicer and cleaner and just finished and plus we didn't have to worry about anyone getting cut or poked. Next I had this dark raffia on hand and I just hot glued a little bit of that into the corners and the edges and I just cut it up a little bit too so it wouldn't look bent. It would just look more realistic and I had to use a whole bunch of hot glue to get it to stay where I wanted it to but once I was finished I thought it looked really cute and was the perfect added touch to the sign. Then I did have a little speckled egg from Dollar Tree that I decided to add in the corner of the sign and I think it just gave it the perfect finished look.
So for this next DIY, I actually had this bucket from Goodwill and it had this lid on it and I didn't want to keep the lid. For one thing, I didn't like the design on it, but also there was foam inside of there and you just never know what you're getting from a thrift store when there's foam inside of it. Could be growing mold or anything nasty in there. So I just decided to take it apart and inside there was this nice round piece of wood and I decided to use that for this project. Next, I just cut out this really pretty design with my Cricut and used some gray chalk paint on this stencil and I think it turned out really pretty. Then I distressed it with my sandpaper and actually took some of the dust from the paint and rubbed it all over the sign and it kind of got in the grooves of the wood and the paint and I think it just turned out so perfectly rustic and kind of boho and it's just really, really pretty. I think this would be perfect for a little tray in your kitchen or your dining room table or even as wall decor. For this next DIY, I have this stool that also belonged to my grandparents. I actually have two of them, but I've only done one of them so far. I just went ahead and covered the whole entire thing with some white Waverly chalk paint. There was originally a design on the top, but it had worn off over years of my mom and her sister and brother using these stools. So I just decided to give it a little bit of a refresh. So I painted the whole entire thing with that white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I did make a stencil with my Cricut with some little feet on there. I thought it would be really, really cute for Brie to be able to use this for a stool in the bathroom. Um, or the kitchen but when I made this her feet were very sensitive and she didn't like people touching them or anything and she would freak out if stuff got on her feet so I knew she would not be cool with me using her feet to put a footprint on here so that's why I just did the Cricut stencil and then I did really distress the whole entire thing a lot with my electric sander and I think it turned out really really pretty. I haven't actually sealed it yet so she's actually using the other one most of the time that I haven't even made over yet um, just because I haven't sealed this one and I don't want it to get gross. So I would just make sure if you're going to be using it a lot something like this you'll want to seal it. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a sun emoji down in the comments so that I know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIYs like these. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs> what are you doing? What's on your face? What is all over your face? Chalk. Chalk? Yeah. <laughs>